Welcome back, guys. It is the Brothers Geek Out podcast. I uh, hope you guys are well and safe. Uh, G-Man's in Dubai, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been a full on week, guys. We've got so much to talk about. But uh, G-Man, how you been, bro? How's it going? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Second week in Dubai, or oh, it's been a week, should I say? Uh, we're in our one month accommodation, which is nice. Um, and then yeah, we're just on the search for looking for a place, just enjoying Dubai, enjoying good food. I lost my six pack already. Just been enjoying <laughs> good food. Uh, enjoying Dubai, but um, trying to get settled and whatnot. Um, but yeah, other than that, all good, bro. All good. How are you? I know you've had a busy week. We're gonna talk about it. Stay tuned, guys. Let's watch the other video that we're gonna do. Um, uh, it's on the end of this podcast, so you can watch it separately. Um, Kibler meeting the Rock, and then the Black Adam review because I saw that as well this week. So we'll get yeah. to that. We'll get to that. But how you been anywhere apart from that amazing thing this week? It's been it's been it's been busy. It's been quite tiring. Uh, we didn't just have that event, you know, interviews with the cast as well, guys, which I'm getting up, which is going to be on our social medias. Uh, then meeting the rock, and then you know, Gotham Knights got released this week as well. So we 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 were invited to the launch party at Park Row in London for that as well, which was absolutely amazing. Which I think when you're in London, G man, we I need to take you there. We need to book tables and go eat there. Let's go, man. Yeah, I've never been yeah. there. I don't think I've been. There. So I mean, I mean, not halal games, but you know, fish and some veg, bro. But it, the theme mm-hmm. of the area is just is decent. Nice, yeah, awesome. Uh, but yeah, awesome. we we'll well, do that. We we'll do that. But I um I found my comic book store, right? Freaking mm-hmm. awesome, bro. Awesome. And when I mean awesome, it's the first time I come across a comic book dude who was just enthusiastic and helpful to help as in like when i pick up a couple of issues i'm like oh is this issue one issue two? he'll go and do the research he's like no you need to go get this this and this to understand what's happening here and all yeah. this sort of stuff amazing i was like you're my guy bro like you're my guy yeah you know, when i need comics I'm, I'm coming to you so i bought a few punisher ones punishers got they got a new war journal punisher with his new logo so it looks like they're carrying it on with some war journals and whatnot uh i got these daredevil comics where the issue two was daredevil versus or electro versus um the predator so I was hmm. like, I need this. I want to see what this is about. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, man. Um, yeah, like done some geeky stuff. Uh, but should we get into this? Should we get into should we get straight into it, I guess? Yeah, let's get into it, man. Definitely. Let's get into well, it. <clears throat> again, I put this down. Um, rest in peace, Gene Ditch, I believe that's how you say his name. Prophilic yeah. uh pro- 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 I can't even read now. Prolific animator, passed away at 95. He was um Creator, I think it was creator of like Tom and Jerry and stuff like that. I yeah, think Tom and Jerry, Popeye. Popeye and... He did a lot of work with with that man. So saying that it's been such a busy week, I haven't been able to keep up with the weekly news that we do and you know tributes that we do for for artists and creators that brought something to this world. So now definitely rest in peace. Another you know amazing person that brought some of these classic characters to the screen and you know you know I think. Just being a cartoonist, being an artist, you know the 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 hardships that it carries to try and get something out there is is is, is very difficult. So, uh, thank you for his contribution to the industry, man. Massive thank you. But yeah, rest in peace, dude. Sending love rest and greetings peace. to his family. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, and blessings to his family. Um, hmm. uh, yeah. I'm moving on just real quick. I'm gonna do fight talk with uh, uh why have I gone blank? Chris Curtis. So I was trying to look. But he doesn't like putting his real name out there, but I'm just going to pull it out there. I can't remember his freaking other name. Slick. Uh, my bad. Uh, we haven't done one in ages. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been busy. Uh, he's been busy. And, and obviously, I was in Singapore. Their time difference was always difficult. But now I'm in Dubai. We can make it happen. Big fight happened yesterday. UFC 280. I was up yeah. watching it. Man, amazing fights. Amazing card in nice. Abu Dhabi. I did want to book tickets in Abu Dhabi, but all the shakes bought up all the tickets and whatnot. I'm actually glad, actually. I like watching these events at home in the comfort of my own home or whatnot. So anyway, look, check it out. Uh, We're going to, me and uh, Slick are going to break down the fights and give you our perspectives and our thoughts on it. Uh, But amazing. We've got a new lightweight champion, Islam Makachev. Such a great performance. Uh, Charles Dubronx is an amazing dude. Very humble. Love that guy. Um, 
Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate for him. Someone has to lose, right? It is what it is. But Islam is the new champion. Freaking amazing, man. So yeah, do check out Fight Talk. We're gonna we're gonna go through that. But um, yeah. Yes, so yes. Uh, hype. All right, let's go, bro. Cartoon. So last week, well, I made a mistake. I got caught up in this fake news bullshit, right? I saw all these things about Cartoon Network. Rest in peace, rest in peace. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? Is-? And I saw it multiple things, and we talked about it last week. Yeah, but it was a fake news apparently. Uh, why, why Slim? Shout out to you, bro, for correcting me, um, uh, and watching and always supporting and whatnot. But yeah, it was fake news. So yeah, sorry about Lose. that. I mean, I got caught up in the bullshit. We Social have to media... retract that statement. Retract it, retract bro. That. Yeah, I know. Social media bullshit, man. I got caught up with it. So anyway, thank you, brother, for uh, correcting and supporting. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, always, right. man, always. Cool, let's keep going, man. Uh, Lucy Liu to star in opposite Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans in Prime Video's holiday pick, Red One. So, looks like they're doing more movies. I mean, The Rock, we're going to talk about him in a bit because you met the guy and we can't believe that, but we'll talk about that in a bit. But, uh, yeah, man, Chris Evans, Lucy Liu, The Rock. I mean, the guy, The Rock just doesn't stop, does he? My guy's just constant. Um, I don't know, just constant. It's momentum, isn't it? It's momentum. I mean, listen, I saw a picture uh, Chris Evans put up. Uh, I mean, listen, man, it's good to see all these guys all working together. Uh, it should be a good, fun movie, man. You know, I, I, what am I expecting? You know, I mean, which we'll touch on base later on. Like, what are you expecting to watch when you're watching a rock movie? And like, you know, it's going to be a good, fun action, you know, full of charisma movie. You know what I mean? You've got Chris Evans in there who's just awesome as well. Lucy Liu, that'd be interesting to see. But, like, you know, just to see all these guys come together, working. And, you know, it's all about content and the stuff that gets out there now. We're, we're, we're hungry for more. We're spoiled. We're spoiled because, you know, we're very spoiled. We, we you know, we didn't have this stuff before. But now, bro, listen, it used to take, what, five to six years to make this movie, another three years for it to come out, you know, 10 years to, for it to come out on VHS or another 20 years to come on TV. You know, those were the days we were living. <laughs> now, mm. you know, we're getting something within six months, there is a movie coming out. You know what I mean? Within three months, there's a movie coming out. So times have changed. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited to see what they do, man. I mean, what Chris Evans did in The Grey Man was really good. And Russo Brothers smashed that movie as well, which was good fun. I'm looking forward to seeing it. This one's called, what is it? Uh, Red One. Video? I believe. Red One. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. I'm looking forward to it, bro. Yeah, me too. Me too. So much competition yeah. out there. There's so much content. It's just non-stop. Exactly. And non-stop. Exactly. All right. The next one, I believe this is probably fake news again. But I've seen it a few different things. Maybe it's fake news. I think it might be fake news. But they keep saying Sasha Baron Cohen is going to be or appear as Mastif, Mastif, Mephisto. You know, I can't read right now. I'm tired. Mephisto and appearing in Ironheart. I mean, none of that kind of makes bro. sense. To you. I believe yeah, that's fake. Mephisto, Mephisto, yeah? Mephisto. Oh, bro, I can't even what read, man. Listen, if he's casted... I, I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing to pop him into Iron Heart, but I'm sure it'll have a link to it somewhere later on. But uh, I think he's great, but man. Sasha, you think he'll do good? I mean, he is good. I mean, obviously, we he's know... He's a good actor, bro. He's, he's good. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's good. And he's done some serious one. He did that spy one on Netflix, which was really good. So mm. uh if he is, and I think he can play a bad guy, then I'm sure it'd be fine. But I mean, again, bro, taking risks, Marvel are doing their thing, you know what I mean? So let them let them do it. We got, you know, the end of phase four coming up soon with uh Wakanda Forever, which I'm really excited for. They dropped some new trailers. But yeah, I, I haven't watched any of the new clips or trailers because I was like, you know what? As as all other movies have done, they just keep throwing things in there, which don't throw it in there, man. Why are you mm. doing this for, man? Let me just watch a movie. So after that first trailer and that first trailer reaction, I'm not watching no other ones. I'm not reacting to no other ones and uh, go in there kind of like bl- blinded and just go enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I saw one when um, when I watched Black Adam, so I had no choice but to watch it, but it was awesome too. Super excited. Yeah. And I'm super yeah. excited for Namor. Like, I'm more excited for Namor. Mm. A yeah. character that I'm just not familiar with and I never really care about. But now I'm like, I'm interested. I'm very interested, to be honest with you. So I'm looking forward mm. to him 
Uh, I'm still, I need still to plan it, book my ticket, probably take the day off work and just enjoy it. But come yeah, on, man. Disney, hook uh, a brother, hook a brother, Disney, Disney, come on, let's go, Disney, let's please. go, let's go, please, let's uh, go. You never know, bro, you never know. Um, I started reading some stuff about, and again, this might be fake news that Disney Plus are thinking of doing like a Silver Surfer show and a prequel to Live. Fantastic. So Silver I don't know if that's true or false. But I think that I mean I I think it's a good idea to use those platforms to kind of build the characters a little bit, give a bit of backstory well, yeah. before you put them in a high movie and whatnot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen somebody do like the X Men Marvel presentations. Mm. So they do like a a special origin episode for them, and then jump them into the movies and stuff like that. So it'd be great, but it's just rumors, bro. For now, nothing's been confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, those are rumors. Those are definitely rumors. Uh, all right, all right, cool. More Marvel stuff. Scarlett Johansson to be the executive producer of Thunderbolt. And link to that, sorry, I missed one. Harrison Ford as General Ross. And I always spoke about it, but I think people are getting really excited and I think people are liking the idea, so they keep throwing it out there. You know, the fans are always trying to make shit happen. They say so, it's confirmed. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to say it's, it's real now because I don't even know anymore, but they're saying yeah. it's confirmed. And I think, why not, man? Have some forward. I mean, my guy's old school. It'd be awesome if he had... My, my guy's been in Star Wars. Um, he's uh, um, Indiana Jones. Put him in a Marvel mm. movie. Why not, man? Freaking hell. Expendables. I mean, loads of... Obviously, loads of movies in between. But it'd be awesome to get him in that MCU just for now. No, definitely, man. Why not? Jump in there, man. Get it done. Uh, mm. He's going to be great. And then, and I think he'll be a great Russ as well. I think so too. And then yeah. even Scarlett Johansson, executive producer, I mean, she, you know what's great? I mean, if that's true, because apparently she was an executive producer of her movie, Black Widow. Um, but remember there was that beef going on or she was suing them because, you know, it came out on Disney Plus or came out so soon on Disney Plus and she lost out in money and the box office money. I I mean, I'm assuming all of that got sorted, right? Like they probably paid her off or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it did I, get sorted, bro. Great that they still work sure. together. Yeah, it's good that to see that it's still working together to, you know, produce content and all that stuff. Like, there's no, I mean, I'm sure, if, like, of course, business is business and whatnot, but it's good to see that it still can work together and stuff like that. No, exactly. I mean, business, bro. Business, as you said, business is business, bro. You know, they, yeah, it's got Javid's favorite line, the, famous line. Yeah, famous line, bro. So business. No, I'm glad. I'm glad, bro. It's got resolved. That's the main thing. Yeah, awesome. And then there's all these other rumors that they're trying to bring uh RDJ back as Iron Man in Secret Wars and all this stuff. I don't know what's true. Marvel's just well, no, out they're trying to do it like I think the problem is now is that we've we've come to a point now where it's just gonna and somebody's gonna say something, somebody's gonna go with it, and it's just gonna keep going viral and you know. Unless we it's see the bit. actor themselves or Kevin Feige confirming it, I don't think you could believe anything. But the rumours and speculations are always fun. Uh, it just keeps, keeps always us going. Is, so always is, always is, always yeah. is, yeah. Cool. All right, well, look, before we get into our thing, the last thing that happened this week was the Creed 3 trailer, which looked awesome. I thought it looked Bro, wicked. I love them. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, look, great trailer. Jonathan uh, Majors just looks absolutely awesome as well. Uh, the physicality of this movie is beyond, bro, because them guys look like, like perfect specimens, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, you know, like, you know when you draw like X-Men characters or superhero characters and you see body shapes, you're like, that's that's why it is, man. That's yeah, what you're seeing, you know what I mean? Perfectly. I yeah. mean, man, damn, I'm motivated. I mean, like I said, I am lost my six-pack coming to Dubai and whatnot, um, <laughs> but I'm getting motivated, bro. I'm not even joking. Like, Jonathan May Mayer just... Um, Bro, I know he's trained for Kang as well, because the Kang that he's playing is obviously the warrior Kang, so he's going to be in great yeah. shape or whatnot. But boy, he looked good. And I like the way they're going with the story, because at first I thought it was yeah. Club of Lang's son, and I was like, oh, you're doing another son yeah. one. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I like where they're going with this, and I feel like it's a perfect... Because Rocky's not going to be... Oh, well, we don't know. He could make a cameo, but Rocky's not going to be in it. And he's moving on from that universe. But just... just mm. This links it back to from the trailer. Look, links it back to Creed's, uh, his mm. story, his background, his past. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. So it's kind of moving the story on with Creed 
and him and his story, his background, rather than linking it back to the Rocky universe, which was the first one about Apollo Creed, the second one about Drago's son. Now it's just about his history and it's his part now, his part, yeah, his part, which is so which is great to see, man. It'd be interesting. I think listen, bro, I think they're gonna show us a scene where Rocky's no longer with us no more in that universe, which is gonna be heartbreaking. Uh but it, the cancer, be remember he the carrier. Yeah. I think, yeah, the cancer, right? I reckon they're going to say that maybe he passed away from the cancer and you're going to see again. his grave and Adrian's grave or something next to you. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I reckon like, they'll have a little scene where Creed... Um, He's paying will respect, go to... yeah. Yeah, like, you know, Rocky had the chair. Remember, he had the chair. and he... Maybe he does one of those ones or sort of thing. So that will be emotional. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Happening. That will yeah, be. That would be will heartbreaking be. to see a character like Rocky pass away because... You know, when they put when they, you know, with these characters, like when they just kind of, you know, Rocky Five finish, you just thought you're done. Or when Rocky Six happened, mm. you just thought you're done with a character. But to actually possibly see them pass away, like Iron Man or whatnot, but this is, this is a bit more iconic because this was a character from the 70s. Um, yeah. So exactly anyway, that. it could be, exactly it could that. be a heartbreak. It could be a very heart touching scene. Uh, I can see that happening. Um, Cool, bro. But listen, if we ain't got nothing else to talk about, let's talk about the main event, bro, which is, you know, you, me, and The Rock, Kibler, me, and The Rock, and then the Black Adam preview, man. Let's, let, let's start off with you, me, and The Rock. How was that? How is he? What was his vibe like? How, like, tell me everything, bro. Like, I, I, I need to know, man. Like, I was so pumped for you the whole week. I'm still pumped. I still keep saying, <laughs> I can't believe Kibler met The Rock. And just seeing the videos of him talking, just seeing the pictures of you guys, the twins picture, everything is just being on a hype this week. The Rock. I mean, I used to watch this dude in WWE, WWF, uh, Nation of Domination, the most <laughs> electrifying people's champion. The, uh, all this sort of stuff, man. Mum even acknowledging like that you've seen him. Yeah. Like, Tell me, bro, how was it? How was he? What, <clears throat> give as much detail as possible, bro. No, no, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Listen, first of all, shout out and a and a and a and a and a what's the word? A great deep thank you to the guys at DC UK Comics and W Warner Brothers UK because you guys made that happen. And I don't know what I did good to deserve that type of opportunity, but bro, it was emotional, bro. Like, and the thing is, you don't know like what, what's going to happen, you know. So like. You know, months back, they told us, keep these dates free, you know, come closer to the time, all the promos going out and, you know, the excitement. And then, you know, then they tell me like a week, I think we watched it a week before it came out officially, which was yesterday. So we saw it in cinema. I saw it in cinema two weeks. I saw it in Warner Brothers two weeks ago, bro. So luckily they gave me the opportunity to watch it, you know, early and, you know what, bro? I thoroughly enjoyed the movie for what it is. You know what I mean? Rock brings, Dwayne Johnson brings his own to this film and makes it his own uh, 15 year passion project. You know, absolutely amazing. And then, you know, we had interviews with the cast and the producers on Monday. And so, who did you speak to? Who did you speak to? So, I got to, to speak to uh, so Noah Centino, Quintessa Swindell, uh, Bull Flynn. Buflin, sorry, shit, I almost said his name. I said his name wrong. Uh, Hiram uh, Garcia, those two are the producers, and uh, Pierce Brosnan and, and Aldous Hodge. So I got to geek out with all of these people, and it was absolutely amazing. Uh, I haven't seen then, any of them yet. How was those? Yeah, sorry, I, I know you got you got so much to talk about. I want to know, like, how was it talking to them? What did your questions you asked them? Can you speak like what? What did you? How did you prepare? All so the, the article will go out tomorrow because this one you have to type up and put out. So. I'll have that article out tomorrow. So it's been such a busy week. I haven't had the chance to do it. But listen, speaking to Hiram and, and Bu about, you know, the production, how they put it together, you know, I asked questions about, like, what was your favourite superhero costume? I asked Quintessa and Noah what was the the, the responsibilities and uh, pressures of playing these iconic characters because, you know, the JSA are characters that were before any superhero teams, bro. They're the first hero superhero team. So you, you're talking about you know, before the X-Men, before Justice League, before Avengers, those are the first ones. So it's a, a deep, massive responsibility that they take when when taking on these characters. You know, they gave me great answers. And then I spoke to Pierce Brosnan and Aldous Hodge. Aldous Hodge, who's a, 
uh, an artist, a martial artist. Uh, he's done loads of films, loads of TV. Uh, and Pierce Brosnan, uh, as you know, 007, that was just moist, bro. Just so moist. And like we spoke about yeah. art because they're both artists. So we spoke about art. And, you know, again, great responses. So, guys, that will come out on social media tomorrow. Uh, the articles will come out on Tumblr and LinkedIn. Uh, now it's made me think that I need a website where I can write these interviews out, but we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that later on because we've got loads going on. But anyway, listen, so interviews happen Monday, Tuesday morning, we get a message, or I think it was Monday evening, we get a message saying, come to the hotel for drinks. So I thought it was a networking event, bro. You know, people from... The PR company, people from, and all the other influencers, you know, shout outs to Luke Bug, the geek is still, Tasman, the, aspir uh, the aspiring Kryptonian, uh, DC World, Paul Edwards, uh, Nicola from We Have a Hulk, uh, Timmy from the Nerd Council, Stephen Geekface uh, from uh, NSEGA, I think it's called, uh, the Cyber Nerds. Man, there were so many people there and we were just geeking out and then, you know, who knew, bro? They they said a special guest is coming. You know, so it wait, could have been they didn't the tell you. They didn't tell you you're gonna meet the Rock. They they mm. kept that anonymous. Oh my god. They kept that anon, anon anonymous, and then you know where they're mingling, and then my guy walks in and goes like, you know, look at all these beautiful people, and I was like, what the hell? He came in in his purple suit. And you know what the ironic thing is, bro? And I need to put that post out. My guy came out in a purple suit. And it's an, exactly a year ago, I tweeted my reaction with a purple Joker hoodie. And then I get to see him. Just nuts, bro. He came in, everybody was screaming, shouting. He came in, he talked about... You know, he shook all of our hands. Uh, he he talked about uh, his passion in this project, uh, his excitement. You know, he was probably there for like 20, 25 minutes, geeking out with everybody, screaming and shouting, and did the little video as well, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, and it's hard, bro. If you look at the footage that I got on my phone, bro, you'd be like, Kibbs, what the F, f is this, bro? Bro, I was so nice pressing buttons and ting. All the photos are blurry. All the videos are all half cut. Uh, luckily, shout us again to the Nerd Council, Timmy, who who gave his phone and shared it with all of us, which was the footage. And Paul, uh, who got the handshake as well. Uh, but no, absolutely, you could just feel the guy's charisma, bro. Just so excited to get this project out there. Uh, very proud to be a DC fan as well. Nice guy. Yeah, absolutely. He just nice looks guy. like he makes the effort, like, to, to say hello to everyone, to make sure he's acknowledged everyone, to, you know, make yeah. sure, like, no one in the room felt like they, no one, everyone in the room belonged, you know what I mean? He he, he looks like yeah. that type of dude. Like, exactly. You know, he made sure exactly that. that. He acknowledged and shook everyone's hand. I'm like, and and it's like, he, he seemed like the type of guy, you said 20 minutes, 25 minutes, like, he seemed like the type of guy that's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, spend time with them. It's not just going to come in and be like, oh, what's up, people? And then walk away. Like, he literally looked like he was trying to spend time with Ululula. And he's such a... He is the people's champ, right? I mean, he lives up to mm. that to that, to that mantle, right? The people's champ. He still does, bro. He still does. He still does. Bless him. Uh, Tell me about the photos, bro, because the twins' <laughs> photos came out with Joe. You were saying that he was cussing you because you were copying... Why was you copying him anyway? I was just... Nervous? I didn't know what to do. I was like this. I was nervous. I was... You know, I'm the short guy there, but he also taller than me. Like, what sort of pose do you do? But you know what? Automatically, I didn't realise that I was doing the little... The tilt that Dan DeVito was doing with Arnold in the twins' poster. <laughs> and one guy that I know was like, bro, the, all I could see is a remake of twins and, like, sent me this photo and I was dying, bro. And then I was like... Somebody said, change the suit to purple. So then I, I put it into Photoshop, change it to purple. And, oh, but and yeah, so no, in that moment, he's taking pictures with us. And, you know, I was just, I didn't know what to do. I was nervous. So I'm with The Rock, you know, and they are, you were taking a group photo together. You want to make it fun. And then he's like, stop copying my pose. And I was like, I don't know what to do, man. Like, and then, you know, <laughs> the, everybody was laughing and the reactions were... It was it was a, a surreal moment, bro. A surreal moment. I mean, I I mean, I I watch wrestling. I wasn't a massive massive fan, but I knew who The Rock was. I knew what he was up against, and 
how his career has you know gone by and what he's done uh and he still continuously does great work for his fans bro you know what i mean he does not do it for the industry he never i don't think he's an industry guy bro and he never will do it for the industry bro he does stuff that people are going to enjoy and love that's why people love what he does and that's a guy that's against that type of the system because if, if you look at as you can see, you saw the Rotten Tomatoes score and people were saying this shit and the rest of it and blah, 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 and the rest of it. Bro, look at the audience score, bro. The audience shows that the audience are absolutely enjoying this movie. And they're, all of his films are like that. So I don't know what people are expecting to see. Like, you know, somebody asked me the other day, I was like, yeah, it's not the I'm Dark Knight. You're not getting the Dark Knight. You know what I mean? You're looking at two different genres. Not genres, it's the same uh genres of movie but you're looking at two different landscapes of the way movie making is done you know what i mean there's something wrong with these critics like listen i am no critic and they're supposed to be experts but bro yeah i've seen yeah. shit where again like up my opinion but you've seen she hulk and you know captain marvel captain marvel was okay but it wasn't as bad as she hulk get high rotten tomatoes i'm fuck rotten tomatoes sorry but that's like you know, that's it's what right tomorrow's it doesn't that don't mean shit mm. anyway. It comes down to you. But they got high critic scores and then low audience scores. When mm. you got Man of Steel and Black Adam getting low critic skills but really high audience skill. So I just feel like something's dodgy, man, because no way the movie is that no way you can say She Hulk is better than like the critics. Like I mean, I think they're just being like woke motherfuckers. I don't know if that's the case, but it, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. But We'll, we'll talk about the movie in a bit, but yeah, I did mm. think all that shit is bullshit. And I saw his tweet, and he was just like, "Well, Black Adam don't give a fuck" or some shit like that uh, about the critics and stuff like that. So I love that he does. He come across. Did, I mean, obviously, you're excited to be there and stuff, and obviously he's gonna be nice. But does he does he come across intimidating, or does he come across like one of the no, lads? bro? I mean, no, because... you know what? He was actually he actually looked nervous when he came in. Are you for real? Yeah, he had a little bit of nervousness. There's a video I've got, and he looked a bit nervous and. I think, you know, it's overwhelming and, and to, you know, to hear people's reactions about the project that he's done. Uh, it's a lot of work when, you know, again, me as an artist knows that when you put your work out there in the world, you're going to get shit for it. You know what I mean? Regardless. Uh, but he came into that room, you know, knowing that everybody was fans of him, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, and he brings a really good vibe to himself. You know, he is... He is the people's champion. You know what I mean? That guy went from, as you said, man, seven bucks production, bro. His story is inspiring in itself. You know what I mean? So when you meet somebody like that, it makes you think, look, I'm an everyday geek from Tottenham, bro. You know, I went from being, and I'm still battling and I'm still going to be pushing the work I do and what we do with the podcast and stuff. You know, we're, we're kids from Tottenham that really enjoy pop culture and, you know, he he notices things like you know people notice things like that so he brings that love to the, his fans bro he knows how much hard work gets put into this so the 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 fact of the matter that he came they came and took their time out and and gave, gave us the opportunity to do that i mean moist bro absolutely moist but absolutely like moist. I, I you know just just to touch on that i mean i i, I made a post because i was so happy for you i'm jealous as well i'm mm. not gonna lie but i was so happy for you <laughs> but it was like this was exactly what I said. Like, like what I how I feel. I'm like the 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 fact that we put commitment into it, not based on money, just two brothers across the world using this opportunity to catch up and geek out and pull it as a podcast, just pull it out there in the world. And we kept consistent for over six years doing it. And I've had people in the past. That's like, been six years, bro. Yeah, four years in Singapore, and we started it in in um, Hong Kong, like within the last six year. Six years. Of Hong Kong. Damn. All right. Yeah, sorry, you were saying people. People have said. Yeah, I've had people, you know, who I've told I've got or, or they've seen I've got podcasts, and I'm supposed to be like, I guess, friends or acquaintances, and they would always comment about the views and blah blah. Oh, but you've got no views, and they'll look at you like, we, 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 what is this shit, right? And I'm like, to the point where you're meeting the rock. Now you've met a few other people in the time, and and all like Kevin Smith, all that sort of stuff, but you just met the rock. I mean, it just goes to show. Like hard work pays off, being consistent pays off. Not yeah. thinking about yeah. the money and the bullshit that that could possibly come with it. It's just about doing it, you know, doing something that we love. Uh, again, geeking out about all this sort of stuff. 
um and 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 just just doing it every week consistently consistency pays off bro and you met the rock it's just absolutely amazing man i i'm just still stoked for you when you shook his hand because that was funny man i was kibla ahmed from the brothers geek out podcast like <laughs> like like did he feel like the rock i mean it's a weird question man but i want to know like did he feel yeah like man it was a good 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 firm handshake bro good firm handshake solid and dude yeah didn't solid play. dude and like i didn't know what to go with because when the woman was coming uh sophie was coming around to introduce everybody i was like what do i you know you you you, you want them to know as well where you're coming from as well and I think Kibla Ahmed has had his thing and will always be there but the podcast as I said last year was our main focus to push a little bit more and again you know it wasn't you know it was like it just came out it was the Kibla the Brothers Geek Out podcast and it was like Kibla it's good to see you man I was like oh man much yeah I heard it was Ailey that's what I'm saying bro you shook his hand bro don't ever wash that hand again and I was like he said your (laughs) name and shit like what I noticed about him as well he he acknowledged your name. Nice to meet you, Kibler. Yeah. Nice to meet you, yeah. so and so. Like he said the name. Like he wasn't just like hello, hello. He, yeah, he, yeah, no, he did. He, he did sure to he everybody. Listened. Yeah, he made yeah, sure he listened everybody. to your introduction and then he repeated your name back. It just goes to show not just like a true attention to detail, but really um, you know, really focusing on and, and showing you that you have my attention. Like I mm. I'm 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 um genuinely pleasure to meet you because you meet like bro i'm the type of guy like you meet someone and they tell me their name and immediately i forget their name <laughs> immediately forget their name. i'm like what's this motherfucker's name i'm that guy bro but he took if you really want to know someone he's gonna man, think about the names that he had to just listen to and then say it back, it back. And- exactly he did he did it the same and he there was one guy named Ray- raven who is geek sensei uh shout out to the nerd uh, cyber nerds as well you know, he repeated his name, shook his hand, had a moment where he was like, man, you're squeezing the fuck out of my hands, man. Yeah, yeah, I heard uh, that, I heard that, yeah. Uh, but he's, yeah, it was, it, 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 you, you take time with your fans. And I think that's what it's all about. I mean, speaking to the producers, bro, like even them, their, their excitement, their passion in it, it just vibes off and the interview ends up being really great. I mean, we met uh, producer Bu, uh, Flynn, at the end of uh, the, the premiere, the London premiere. We got invited to go to the London premiere after. And, you know, we saw him at the end, you know, we were excited. It was, he was thankful to us. It was like, thank you for the work that you guys do. You know, Flynn uh, ended up following uh, my page and even laughed about uh, the twins picture, you know, like rewards in so many different ways. And, and you know, we got that comment from, from, from Jamie, who is uh, an avid listener of the podcast and shout outs to you, Geek of Gotham. Uh, and you know, he he even said, you know, Ooh, you yeah. guys don't do this for the the likes and 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 the views. Uh, you could really hear the passion in what you guys talk about in the podcast, and really brightens up his day. And you know, I almost I I, I teared up because I was like, we we've been doing this work for a long time, and it, it was a really it was that was a really emotional message, and and it really touched me. So I I, I can't thank you enough, and thank you for listening. You know, a lot of you have popped out and said, you know, that's amazing work that you've done. And we should both be really proud of this podcast uh, and the work that we've done over the past couple of years. But we can only continue to keep moving it forward and get great opportunities like that. But to hear that from uh, uh, Bu about, you know, thank you for the work that you guys do and interacting with us is, 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 it's emotional, bro, man. It, it proves that, you know, if you're doing it for the love of it, the rest of it will come, bro. You know, that's yeah, a massive I mean, payoff with the amount we've done, bro. A massive payoff. Uh, I don't want to do it for the money, bro. I'm not in it for the money. I never have. Recently, I was after I got back from Hong Kong. I knew it was never about that because money's going to come and go regardless. But what opportunities like this won't, you know, for us who are, who love this pop culture stuff, you know, I can imagine Dad's feeling right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I was legacy, just man. saying this. I was just saying this a while ago. Like, first of all. It, the, the, mm. the turnaround happened in Hong Kong. But I've seen your journey, bro. And I've seen all, if, if I'm going to be honest with you, the whole make money quick, get rich quick things that you guys were trying to do back in the days. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but mm. it was a focus back then was all about the money. That's why nev- mm. nothing ever happened. As bad as it sounds, nothing ever happened. Even though the hard work you put into it, 
all those things, man. Like, but the focus was money. The goal was money and being successful and all that sort of shit. And I remember the turnaround, which when it was Hong Kong, you came to Hong Kong. And this is why I'm grateful for me being there, having the opportunity to go to Hong Kong, because it just triggered off a chain mm. reaction. You know what I mean? Leading to this point right now, me being in Dubai, you being in the rock, uh, me in the rock, sorry, not being in the rock. Anyway, um, <laughs> like when you think about it, and the other day, like, uh, Mrs. was saying that to me today. So I went I went Zoom up for it on Friday, right? It is hot mm. out there. So I, I decided... It's, it's Dubai, there's mosques everywhere. I'm going to go have a little walk. It won't be too far, right? I'm, I walk to the mosque 15 minutes. I literally, where we're staying is a bit uh, secluded and whatnot. I'm literally yeah. walking on sand. I'm walking on the desert. I go to one location because my idea was I'm going to use these locations and every week I'm going to go to a different mosque. Anyway, I go to mosque number one. It doesn't exist. I'm like, what the hell, Google Map? You made me lose. I'm losing out here. It's hot, sweating, all this sort of shit. So I walked to the second mosque. It's another 15 minute walk. I was like, oh my God, it's so hot. Let's just do it. It's still in construction. I'm like, Google Map, you're killing me here, bro. I love these. <laughs> Get me to the mosque. It's so hot. Then I was like, you know, still calm. And whatnot. I was like, zoom up, I got to go. So I went mm. to the third mosque, which is like 25 minutes away. I'm walking there. I see some brothers. I'm like, where's the mosque? And then I find out Google Map also told me the wrong time. Most in the mosque started at prayer started at 1 15. It told me it was at 12 15. So I'm an hour early. So I've kind of left work. I've been walking in this hot blaze in some 45 minutes looking for the mosque and whatnot. Anyway, I stayed calm, sat in the mosque for an hour, done my prayers, mm. all that sort of stuff. Mm. But, but, I, and I'm not going to go into it too much. Couple things in my life in, in, in Singapore was affecting me, very stressing me out. Couple things. Mm. I, pro- I, I swear to you, bro, just having that, I, I don't know if the mosque thing had anything to do, but just having faith and all that sort of stuff, mm. I believe has a lot to do with it. Those two things just got resolved. I mean, I'm still on the end of it, but they actually got resolved in the way that I wanted it to get resolved. Does that yeah, make yeah. sense? Right? I'm not going to go into the details of that. There's no need. But man, I was like, man. And then this this rock thing happened and all this sort of stuff. And the missus was just talking about it as well. Like, you know, I think it's got, you know, the faith. Like, I, I'm not saying I'm the most perfect practicing muslim because i'm trying my best but my faith will never go mm. and then just being in dubai like what's happening with you podcast the opportunities i'm seeing in dubai i'm just like this is all down to faith man like like alhamdulillah you know what i'm trying to say you know when, yeah, like, yeah of course alhamdulillah, yeah, alhamdulillah yeah, definitely. yeah man uh the rock the feeling the how, how it happened how it, how it became you know one year ago that tweet went out and you know me just re just doing the work that we love doing and getting it out there. That was the response and the rewards a year later was to get to finally meet this guy hand in hand and go to the UK premiere as well, which was absolutely amazing. Bless, listen, speaking to Aldous Hodge and Pierce Brosnan was an absolute pleasure. Pierce is just so cool. Uh, he took his 90 year old mum to the premiere, which was just absolutely amazing and sweet to see, you know, uh, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. And, you know, when the cast came out and did their thing. <clears throat> and then, yeah, absolutely amazing experience, man. When, when I actually, you know what? Shout out to the guys at Park Row as well. You know, they invited us over there as well after for a few drinks and some food. Uh, so really, like, in this DC world, bro, it's nuts, bro. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of both all the franchises, but that... To be a part of that, they mean, you know, calling us the DC family in the UK, that's sick, bro. It's just, it's amazing. I'm change my profile name to that, you know, DC UK family, bro. Sick, absolutely sick. I, I think, um, I mean, again, who who would have known, like, like just me and PS Brosnan and whatnot, like, you know, James Bond and whatnot, man. It's, it, it's sick. I think, you know, I was thinking as well, like, you know, I, I always say that I need to push it in Dubai and whatnot. And I will. I'll try to. But mm. you're good at this shit. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I'll be too nervous. I'll be too like, eh, the rock. Huh? Look at him like a little schoolgirl and whatnot. I will lose, man. <laughs> you're good at that. You kind of, obviously, you know, you're always going to have the nerves and the anxiety and all that sort of stuff. But I feel like you're getting con- <clears throat> conditioned to get comfortable with these people because they're humans and they're, they, they are humans but it, it, it you, you do put them on a pedestal right you don't mean mm. to you do right because of success and inspiration and blah 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 and all that sort of stuff but you're getting to a point where you're good at because like one of my things i don't like public speaking mm. and i'm not sure if you're good at that shit either but no i'm, I, not, I'm I, not great but i can do it but it depends mm. like with something like this you know it's, it's it's something that 
we love doing so it, it's it's it comes naturally you know and it's taken time like don't get me wrong i think the first big interview i did was matt reeves and and, and darren D- darren clark uh for you know the batman you know stuff like that is insane bro because you're kind of like thinking wow these guys are you know big in the industry you know you, you you're inspired by the work that they do and their visuals that they do i mean i'm always going to come to it in a creator's artist sort of way not you know yes it will come from like comic book knowledge and stuff like that but just fan bro you know i'm just fanboying you know what i mean so it's it's it, it, it takes time but it, bro take me to work and do a work presentation i'm losing bro <laughs> you know what i mean i'm losing I, I can't do it bro i am always losing it. i can't even look people straight in the eye bro at work because i'm like there's too many people there man shit but we could do you know it's given me the podcast has given me more confidence and getting more videos out there as well and that's always hard i mean ash did review for Gotham Knights, so shout out to the guys at WB Games that invited us to the, the Gotham Knights launch, but then, you know, gave us the opportunity to have a, a sneak peek of the game as well, and bro, I, I played it there as well in Park Royal, they had a wicked games room set up, and I actually kind of miss gaming, uh, I kind of got used to it, and I was like, you know what, uh, somebody give me their PlayStation 5 or something, man, <clears throat> Ash has got two consoles, give it to me, man, let me just no, play. No, 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 I'm taking that, bro, let's, 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 I see where you're going, that's mine, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Don't blame me, yeah shout out to them, it was good, it was, yeah, yeah. it was good, it was nah, good. It... Listen, bro, overall, yeah, it's been a fantastic week and a great uh, week for, a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a, they call us content creators, but I'm going to still be like an artist, you know what I mean? We're podcasters. So we've got more coming up next week, guys. So you know, next week we got uh, Comic Con. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet Tom Welling, uh, so I'm excited oh. about that. Uh, Smallville, you know, uh, Lois Lane's there. Kara's Supergirl that played in Smallville. So I feel like I need to tick that off my list because Smallville really picked it up for us when it came into the superhero genre of being on TV and putting it in that sense because that was ten seasons we all went through. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, listen, uh, we've got busy stuff. We've got loads more stuff to come for you guys, man. So, like, you know, my main thing is grateful to you guys that who do listen in, who do follow the channels, and, you know, great response that I've got and overwhelming messages that I've got from people. There's a lot of people that have come out of the woodworks, never usually like the stuff or, you know, but, you know, they see that and it's like, it scares me. What's, why, Kibler, what is it you do, bro? What is it you do? I was like, no, bro. I am just a fan, bro. You know, Pete, uh, well, I, mean, I think you're somebody, a fan, but you, you, we put work in. I mean, doing this, like, honestly, I mean, okay, this is easy in one way, right? But to collaborate our time because you're communicating with me every week again, eight hours difference when we time difference when we were in, I was in Asia, now it's gonna be a bit better. But there's, there's that, man, there's hard work, there's you uploading the content and all that. There's, there's work behind it, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, there's hours and hours behind it. So, you're a fan but you've put the consistent work into it. You have to, you can't, you can't take that away because people could just think now like, oh, we just press record and talk. Yes, that is the base of it, but you go ahead and do whatever content shit. It's, it, it, it's effort, bro. That's what I'm saying. So people will come out and be like, oh shit, he met the rock. What the hell do you do and whatnot? But you know, like it's consistency as well. Consistency is key to anything, bro. We've kept that consistent, um, so you know, people will come out, man. I mean, like, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's it's it's. I don't know, man. Both of our lives have been crazy. Think about the last. Yeah. Just think about the last eight years, bro. Both of where our lives have headed. Now, mm. you know, I've moved around the world. You've had these opportunity, amazing opportunities, uh, with celebrities and whatnot. It. Who would have freaking thought, bro? Who would have mm. thought when we watched? Freaking! I remember when I first went to New York when I got the job with Dow Jones. We went and watched Hulk before I moved down the Incredible Hulk. And when we were sitting there and the MCU just started, who would have thought that, holy shit, the next eight years, bro, <laughs> is going to go crazy? Was it eight years? No, no. That Longer was 14 that. years ago. Sorry. 14 years ago, bro. Who would have thought years. that all this shit will happen to us in our lives? Like, I was just saying, like, as well, when we were growing up and, you know, you know, education and, and some stuff didn't work out. You needed not work out for, for certain things and... You're just thinking, what do I do with my life and what's going to happen? And now look at us, bro. Look at us. I'm living like a great life in Dubai. Well, I will be living a great life once I so, so settle down. you got these great opportunities going on. Like, again, who would have thought, bro, like, 
hard work pays off, man. And let's just keep doing it. The thing is, we're just going to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Non-stop. It'll be another 10 years from now. And God knows what can happen. But we're just going to be consistent with our work, keep our faith, and just keep going, bro. That's it. No, no, no. That's right, bro. That is right. We'll work on it, man. To the next generation, I suppose. Like, I had a thought in my head the other day, and I was like, you know, all the kids in the family and the rest of it, and you're like, they've got something great to look back at, you know, after they turn 18, because we swear a lot on this, after they turn 18 and they see this, you know. But it, it's, I think that's the part for me is going to be amazing, you know, when Alara grows up and she'll be like, you know, she looks back at our Instagram page or something and be like, Dad, and, you know, they did this stuff. And that's amazing because, you know, there was one thing I was having a conversation about to 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 some of the guys that were there, influence, influencer-wise. I don't like being called an influencer because I'm more of a fan, really. And, you know, yes, I say, yeah, man, go get this, get that, you know, people because people ask me, you know, but I, I don't like to sway decisions because everybody has their own decisions. And, you know, well, we're going to talk about the review after, but, like, diversity, you know, getting to see people like me up on the stage or up on doing things like this is it's so important. It's so key. And I know it's what woke, but to the power, bro, to the power. You get to see people like my face standing next to the rock, looking like twins, bro. Come on, let's do the twins remake. Let's let's well, let's make go. the universe work. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, all right. Let's let's move on to the review, man. Anyway, but uh, yeah, shout out to the guys at Warner Brothers Games as well. You know, they gave me a great goodie bag from the the night at the at the Gotham Knights launch. I so far enjoyed the game, and that was only playing like half an hour of it. Ash is really enjoying it. We're going to get some more reviews of him this week as well. Uh, and Park Row, you guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, always hooking us up, so I, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, just thank the DC and the Warner Brothers universe for giving me these opportunities. Uh, I'm very grateful, very thankful. And, you know, yeah, man, we, we, we do it. We do it. We do it. We do it. But yeah, here we go. Let's, let's jump into the Black Adam review. What was your thoughts, bro? Well, okay, so I have to say, I I I freaking enjoyed it. I fr- I really enjoyed it from beginning to end. And I keep saying this that my thoughts is like, it's like the darkness that everyone always criticizes DC with, but it's that Snyderverse darkness with the charm yeah. of like a Marvel movie. Now I don't want to say it's a Marvel movie, but I'm trying to find the right yeah. thing to compare it to. But it had so much charm to it, which is why it was so different. I thought the action was awesome. I love the way they portrayed his power and these super yeah. beings fighting. I love that, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I still definitely. to this day can't figure out why man has still got so much shit, but when you got two super beings fighting in a the city, they're yeah. going to break through buildings and everything, right? Exactly. So I love exactly. that. The fights between him and Hawkman was freaking amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah. I just loved amazing. it. The way he would battle, the, the, the way he battered human beings, is. I always said this, if Superman punched someone, they would blow up. There was one scene yeah, yeah, exactly. by his arm and he ripped his arm off. And I'm like, that's the, that's what would happen. Yeah. Like, like exactly. so I loved all the action. He looked awesome. The costume designs, everything was sick. I think Piers Brosnan done an amazing job with Dr. Fate. I think the character building, they could have done more because it's tough to build. You know, you did just introduce the Justice Society into it. It's difficult right, yeah. to build that. But I did think they... They got. I think they done great with Pierce Brosnan as Doctor Fate. He was the best. I have to say, of all the characters, apart from Black Adam, he was awesome. Because mm. spoiler alert, we're spoiling it, right? Yeah, spoiler alerts. Films out. You have to go see it. Your films out, man. It's out. Go yeah. on, spoil it, spoil it. All right, spoiler alerts. If you haven't seen it, when he when he decided to sacrifice himself, I generally yeah. felt. And I'm like, I felt emotional because you built his character good enough for me to care about him. And yeah. Pierce Brosnan had a wicked job selling that. Because he was so charming during the movie. He was funny. He was, he was. He was so awesome. Uh, and then when he sacrificed himself, I felt, I felt that. I thought that was awesome. So I think he was, for me, he was one of my favorite characters. And I'm not familiar with all these characters. Um, mm. Black <clears throat> um, Hawkman, and he, he was a great leader. I thought, again, his his... Him and The Rock, they went off so good. The battles they had was so good. Yeah. Uh, so entertaining. Uh, it's what I want to see. Well, I, yeah, I yeah. want to see that sort of action and stuff. Again, his leadership was awesome. Atom Smasher was another charming character. He was like that Spider-Man, you know, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But which again, like you know, it wasn't cheesy comedy. I, I keep you know when they done the Flash in the Justice League, oh my god, that was cringy, right? When that mm. first came out, he was just kind of like, oh my god, it's a bat cave. It was so fucking cringy. But with this yeah. character, it wasn't cringy. It was very funny. It was very charming. I loved the little you know when he kept saying me and you, me and you. I, I loved that that relationship they mm. had. So I thought that was awesome. I thought the character building could have been better, but it was good enough for me to care about them. The um the tornado girl, what's her name? I forgot her name. Cyclone. Um, Cyclone. I don't. I didn't think much of her, so I don't think there was much. For me, in my opinion, I didn't see much character building with her. She they they promoted her <clears throat> or introduced her with this high IQ and all that sort of stuff, but mm. I don't really think they expressed that. Um, mm. when she was fighting. I don't think she used any of that intelligence because it, you know, again, this is my view. She remember that scene, they were fighting him and, and um, she kind of swooped up all these like metal pipes and whatnot. Yeah. And she yeah, just yeah. fling them at him. Like that was dangerous, man. Like there was humans around. Like that wasn't intelligence. She had 150. She wasn't strategic. I, you had that kind of IQ that they expressed, but I didn't see any of that expressed in mm. her character. I didn't see her being strategic. I didn't see her use her intelligence to, to, to beat Black Adam or, or even in prison. Like, you know what I mean? She could have used her intelligence to be like, oh, do this, this, that. You know what I mean? There was no yeah, strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In <clears throat> so for me, I didn't see much character building in her, even though she was awesome. The little romance her and Atom Smasher had was okay, but I didn't really care about that. Um, I, do I don't think, think it was my romance, was... though. It was more of them getting to know each other a little bit, but I don't think it was I guess so. romance. It's more of a... Uh, uh, a friendly vibe, the brother like and sister sort of vibe, yeah, yeah, relationship, cool. kind of, yeah, yeah. Cool. I do think, oh, so okay, all of that was awesome. But the story was good. I don't think it was bad. It was very predictable. I, I knew mm. Traitor from the from the beginning, first scene, and you, you blatantly, okay, he's gonna wear the crown at the end. Yeah. I get it. Okay, I yeah. saw all of that. That's not a problem. It didn't bug me to. I'm like, oh, that's so predictable. No, we needed a villain. You know, yeah, and yeah. I like the way the Black Adam was, you know, first the villain or you know whatever. Um, the threat. He think, was the threat. Yeah, he was a threat in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. I do think this is my opinion only. Again, right? The humans were not good in this movie. I didn't like them. I, I, the, the kid, I found him very cringy. That end speech that he made, and they, they done this. I was like, ooh, and then he started rolling up in his skateboard, and he was smiling, and I was like. First of all, throughout the movie, why are you there when these super beings are fighting you? You're an idiot. Get out of the way. So, <laughs> so and look, my opinion, I just thought the humans, the, the character building a lot was done with these humans, the yeah. mother and the son. I didn't feel it too much and I didn't really care about them. Uh, I know that hmm. they're not the main, you know, the, the Black the Black Adam's the main character. Mo Amar was hilarious. The part <laughs> when, bro, when he, he was hilarious throughout the whole film, the part that I died when he got shot and he was laying there, and you know, Dr. Fate can see the future. And he goes, he like, how bad is it? He goes, you're not going to die here. Just stay away from electricity. And he goes, the part when he said, when he was like, oh, I'm an electrician. I died, bro. I, that killed me. <laughs> so that was, he was, he was the best human in the movie just because of how funny he was. But the kid, I did not enjoy at all. I, I'm just saying, but, but he smashed it. He's awesome. I just did not enjoy that. I do think, um, the other thing I was going to say with the story and everything, um, shit, what was I going to say? I had, to, I had a thought in my head. Uh, the action was good. story was predictable. Ah, um, oh, man, I had a thought in my head. Where did I go wrong? Where did I go? Uh... Anyway, look, let me carry on. Mm. It'll probably pop into my head. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that all of that was awesome. I thought The Rock was amazing as Black Adam, bro. The mm. costume fit well. His powers were, oh, they were, they were emphasized really well, I think. Oh, this is what I was going to say. The whole thing about that area, I forgot what it's called. Kata, um, what's the, what's the place they... they Kanda. Kanda, yeah. You know what it reminded me of? And this is just my opinion and my thought. It reminded me of like Palestine, just being occupied. And yeah, yeah. Black Adam was almost like the saviour. Um, yeah. Of that. And, and, and it's, it's a truth. And, and you know, you know, the Justice Society only came because of Black Adam. But for the last 20, 30 years, there was no sign of you. There's no sign of the Justice League. You allowed this place to be occupied by this occupants and whatnot. Mm. Uh, and you only showed up and tried to be heroes. You're supposed to be world global heroes and peaceful heroes. But you never showed up while we're being occupied. And you just showed up because we finally got a hero. Someone who's going to stick up for us. And now you show up. Like, 
to try and claim that whatnot. So it kind of reminded me of, you know, of real human situation, real life situation. Again, I'm comparing it to Palestine and whatnot. Um, so I thought that was, I was, I, I don't know if there was any underlying things. I doubt it, but well, maybe there is because in human, it was, it was. I mean, the underlying part of it is that you know, you, you, the real, the heroes are the people that survive issues like this. It's the humans, isn't it? It's based on them. Mm. I mean, the sideline story. It's a sideline story, uh, which gets a bit messy. But, I mean, I'm not watching it. It's it's difficult to say. Like, no, I'm not. I don't want to say underlying message. In. Yeah. Yeah, it reminded yeah. me. It reminded me about that. And I like the way he... The thing is, even with his story and his backstory, I like that because his son looks so innocent and, yeah. you know, he was yeah. the champion and you could see his son was a champion of, like, with, in those scenes that he was there. And obviously, his son sacrificed his powers to him to save his father. And obviously, he used it for revenge and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Cool. That was all awesome. The major spoiler, this is why I'm saying to you that I got really pissed off with social media and this is why I've made the new rule on my new Dubai phone. I don't have no fucking Instagram or Facebook. I no way I'm, del- I'm adding that to my phone. But, man, they spoil, again, big spoiler alerts, they spoil Henry Cavill. Spoil, 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 spoil. Oh, my God, bro. I was crying when I saw that. I was pissed because this is one of the biggest spoilers and Easter eggs in DC yes. movie universe, and yeah. in we all been wanting him back. We wanted him back for Man of Steel, and we wanted his movie. He, like you know, we didn't know if we were gonna get him back after the Justice League, and this is something that we all wanted. And some son, all these sons of bitches on social media spoiled the shit out of it. I know The Rock was teasing it a little bit, but I would have, I, I, bro, I was freaking smiling when I saw him on the big screen at the end. But I would have gone crazy even more if I didn't know what was happening. So. Again, new social media rule. One week before any comic book movie comes out, I'm deleting them. I'm not using them. Bro, when we did the screening, but, but, when we did the screening, we were screaming, how we bro. We were screaming because she, when he was like, I'm, you know, I'm the most powerful in this world. Uh, and then she was like, but we can get somebody that's the most powerful in the universe. And then you see the cape and you hear that John Williams 4, mm. uh, uh, sorry, the John Williams theme. Bro, we screamed. We didn't even hear any of that last bit, bro. We were screaming and shouting. And there was only like 10 of us in the screening. Oh, I could only imagine. I wanted that feeling. For fuck's sake, man. Social media, you sons of bitches. I swear, man. When I first saw that, I was like, I was so upset. I was like, that's the biggest spoiler ever. Fuck you. Like, I I can't believe I saw that. But when I saw him and the fact that we saw him, nobody fucking cameos. It was him. And he's like, we should talk. I was like, oh my god, oh. <laughs> bro, I want to see a battle with these two because it's not gonna be. It's gonna be a battle of like, you know, ego and pride because you know they're good. Yeah, 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 and yeah. eventually you'll be on the yeah. same sort of side. Black Adam's a little bit more ruthless, but it's gonna be a good battle. And I think, yeah. I, think I mean, honestly, listen, yeah, I was gonna say like, <laughs> the one thing that the DC universe yeah. has done with Superman, especially. Um, is we got to see super beings fight in a in 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 a in a Dragon Ball Z sort of way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You don't see in the MCU, of course, you got all of that, right? But we've lost Angry Hulk. I'm I'm gonna use him yeah. as an example. He's the one that causes the destruction, and we should see all that. We've lost yeah. him. In, in we've, we got no Hulks in the thing. I'm sorry, but I'm not cussing it. But I'm just saying all the Hulks that we're supposed to have. We got, so we got no superhuman beings fighting in that way in the, in the MCU. Not, I shouldn't compare it. But the way Man has still done, done it, the way Black Adam's done the way DC's got that, 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 that's their thing, man. They got those Dragon Ball Z type fights. I love it, bro. When, when you know, when they're fighting in the air, they punch, they disappear, come from another side. They, like, yeah. that, that's all Dragon Ball Z shit, bro. And I geek out when I, when I was watching that fight, the way he was doing that, bro, like, they, uh, I oh, can't shit. wait to see Superman and Black Adam fight they're gonna do it they're gonna freaking do it maybe shazam's gonna be in there too which is gonna be awesome i'm looking forward to shazam 2 now because he might hear i I don't know what they're gonna do with this universe also the other thing so i'm going into it right at least now we know they're heading somewhere with the dc universe right you know because we were all in limbo what are they gonna do yeah yeah, 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 yeah. they're carrying it on so now i'm excited to see shazam and is he going to be like, what the hell is going over there? Like, what do you mean another hero? Black, like, you know what I mean? Like, I hope something happens. We might even see Black Adam in that movie. 
you know, listen, the well, new I direction. Hope they do, because, you know, he's still, you know, he was still, you know, in the comic books, he's kind of, you know, he's the anti-hero. So, you know, he's going to be bad. He's going to be good. Depending on the stakes, you know, I mean, Pierce Brosnan said it as well uh, as Dr. Fate, you know, you, 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 there's more to it. Yes, you maybe not feel like that, but they've changed the story, you know, and a lot of people weren't happy about that. But listen, man, it's each to their own, you know. He's brought something back to the universe, to this universe, that, you know, I'm really happy about, you know, a lot of people were emotional, they started crying and the rest of it. And I was like, I, I don't blame him because I think Henry Cavill is amazing. And I think what they've done with this film is he's made it his own. And why not, bro? You you get a franchise like that and you, you make it your own. You work that hard. You put it into it. It's a good, fun movie. Gets messy at times. And yes, that last speech, kind of cringy, kind of got me. I didn't Very, like it. Sorry. Uh, but then, you know, it's not it's not a perfect movie, but it's a fun one. I love it. I enjoyed it. i watch it again. I've watched it twice already. I'm going to watch it again, bro, because I need to... Taking a lot of, you know, we were in the crowd screaming and shouting, where are those guys now? You know what I mean? Where are the fans, like football fans now? With moments like that, we're going to scream and shout. And, you know, some of the battles that Black Adam had with Hawkman, bro, they looked brilliant, bro. The CGI was so great, good. bro. So good, great. Yeah. And Dr. Fate, you know, looked amazing, bro. He's heart. Him and Hartman are, uh, Hartman? <laughs> Hawkman are like the heart of the, the story. Their friendship, their bond, bro, is just... A Mac, like really amazing, bro. So I, uh, I really took that on. So uh, I'm looking forward to see. I want to see more. Uh, it was emotional. That that scene with Doctor Fate got me. I think he has an amazing voice as well, Pierce Brosnan, when he's talking as him as Doctor Fate. It's like, oh man, this is some voice, man. They got Pierce Brosnan to play this character. But then all of these visual effects and powers. But yeah, I, bro, good fun movie. Go watch it. Be your own critic, guys. You know what I mean? Be your own. Go watch it. I mean. What we do on this podcast is always give our thoughts and what we, but I mean, it's stuff we love, you know what I mean? I am still grateful to be getting all of this stuff on the big screen. So, mm. so I mean, watch it, go judge it for yourself. No, it's not going to be for everybody, but listen, it's smashing it at the box office. So good on you. Good pal. Hope it makes all the money. Please make the billions. It deserves billions, yeah. man. Yeah. Not just because of the rock. I really believe it. And like, you know, with Pierce Bosnan as, as, Dr. Fate, like I said, I'm not familiar with these characters, but I'm, I love superheroes, right? I love superhero mm. story. I love that story because it just brings hope, right? Because everyone wants to be a superhero. Every good guy person wants to be a superhero anyway. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. The, the character they built, character building they done with, with Hawkman and Dr. Fate, I would 100% be up for a prequel movie for the Justice Society or those two or both of them individually. Like, I'm, I'm in. I'm in now. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? So exactly. I hope they do yeah. that because I'm not done with um I'm personally not done with Pierce Brosnan as to be honest with you, when I was like when I saw the trailers and Dr. Fate, Pierce Brosnan, I was like, okay, cool. I don't know nothing about it. But now I watched it, I'm a I'm like, I'm a fan now. I'm a you've got me, right? You've done what you know Marvel's formula has always done, which is make me a fan of like Ant Man and all these other characters who are never familiar with, right? You've done that to me with Hawkman mm. and um Dr. Fate. I could and and, and Atom Smasher. Um, mm. I one hundred percent could see a prequel movie with those guys, and I would, I would, I hope they do it because it, it's oh my god, this they've done it so well. So I mean, I, I um, I think they, you know they they finally done well. I think not just finally, Suicide Squad with with um James, James Gunn, Gunn they done that good. well yeah. too. But I, I could, I you, you finally got these are B class characters, right? These are like these are not the Justice League. You you focus so much on the Justice League, like you finally gave me some other characters in the DC universe and it's always going to be like oh how would that be because I'm not even familiar with them but you yeah, got yeah, me yeah, yeah. Like, you got me yeah, you got yeah, me yeah. I'm a exactly fan, that. I'm a fan of those guys now no so exactly. I'll watch, exactly I'll watch way more movies with them I can't wait to see what they do with it uh, bless the rock for putting his production into it and his power bringing Henry, Henry Cavill I, I believe with him and his power and also the new direction of Warner Brothers I think Discovery coming on board them getting that Marvel, DC, uh, sorry, Disney CEO, whatever they, whoever they got. I think the new direction they got and the new owners are, are making a difference. Um, and I think now it makes sense to me. Look, I'm, I still want to see the Batgirl movie, but I think now it makes sense where they were like, we're, we're trying to go somewhere with this now. This is a long-term vision. So enough of these maybe standalones that don't make sense 
And maybe they saw Batgirl and they were like, no, you know what? We're canceling all the CW shows. We're canceling all this shit. No more cheesy shit. No offense. I hope the Batgirl movie mm. was good. I don't know though. But maybe they just like, they saw it and they were like, this doesn't fit into the universe and this this doesn't fit the quality. We're willing to lose ninety million dollars. Let it go. We're only gonna bring out quality shit. Yeah. And I believe that the Black Adam is a start of the new DC universe. And fuck the critics and what and tomorrow is trying to say that shit. That's obviously not true. It's not a ninety percent, a hundred percent. It's not, but it's a good mm. seventy. I would say it's a good. Yeah, 70 yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. So fuck those critics. I don't know. I mean, listen again. I don't know, but when you try and say she hoax like eighty percent and this is like forty percent, then there's something or dodgy going on there. In my in my opinion, um, but but I can't wait. I'm gonna watch it again for sure. I could definitely watch it again. And um, shit, man. Yeah, that was, that was. I mean, I tried to express as much as I can. I mean, I'm. I mean, I mean no, no. Shit. Listen, it's good. It's good. It's good. I mean, I gave my review, bro. You know, they put. Uh... <clears throat> They, hold up, man. I'm gassy. Uh, you know, they put, a, uh, you know, real world issues into a superhero movie, which is uh, smart. Uh, and it maybe not have got the message across because a lot of people didn't didn't enjoy it. Sorry, man, I'm releasing some guests. Uh, mm-hmm. For my listeners, uh, you know, but it was great, fun, good watch. The Rock embodies that character. And, you know, everybody else who supported are absolutely amazing in it. You know, uh, props to all of them uh director uh director of photography the production company you guys are absolutely awesome you gave us something really interesting and I'm 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 grateful for that you know what I mean we get to get these movies and that's what I'm grateful for we get great content I, I'm never gonna be uh, disheartened about that you know what I mean I, I I enjoyed it so no definitely check it out for yourself guys you know mm-hmm. that's the one I love you know I don't do reviews I'm- I don't do reviews because uh, I'm gonna shit on people's work. I do reviews because there's something about that project that interested me and 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 grabbed my attention. Yeah, I know. I mean, we did shit on a little bit of She-Hulk, but I, I guess we realized we weren't the target audience, which is why we shitted on it. But anyway, the whole, the, uh, not to compare it anyway. But do you know what else was good about this or m- made me laugh? Sorry, the way he'll bust through the walls, like like um. Remember Homer no. Simpson when he went to Japan? In Simpsons, yeah. and he would just walk through the wall. He just kept on doing that, and that should crap me up, man. But it also showed the the power that he has. Like you, you never yeah, saw yeah, Superman. Yeah, you saw the Superman battle or not? But you always wonder, like, how if Superman was careless, yeah. how much destruction would there be? And this, I'm not saying exactly. Black Adam was careless, but he just didn't care, or he just wasn't like. I don't know. He, he wasn't trying to hide anything. He was just like boosh, smash through the wall. And I love it when when Doctor Fate was like, "Oh, they never had doors in your time, did they?" And he was like, "Of course they did. That's how we entered rooms." Mm. But <laughs> he was being sarcastic, and I was just busting up about that. But no, listen, man, top quality movie. I'm very um very happy that the way it turned out. From my opinion, I thought it was very enjoyable. And um, bless the rock, the guy's just such a G. Um, mm. Yeah, man. Shit, man. Um, I, exciting times, exciting times, man. We got Black Panther coming out in a couple of weeks as well, so I'm excited for yep, that. Yeah, that's right. Love it, man. It's great to be. I was up yesterday watching the UFC getting pumped as well, but it's just it's just so much good shit going on. I know we're busy and we're hard working and so much stressful stuff going on in life, but when you when you mm. sit back and you know realize the pleasures that you have and. We got first what first world problems. Oh, DC movie wasn't good enough. First world problems. Oh, She Hulk wasn't good enough. But fuck you know, man. Like, shut the fuck up. I'm saying my to myself. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it wasn't it wasn't up to your standards. First world problems. Yeah, shut the fuck up and enjoy it. And I'm talking to myself literally because I was crying about She Hulk. Um, so we got to be grateful for what the fuck we got, man. In life, yeah, in content, we got to. We got to. We, we got, got to be. We got to be. We got to be, we got to be. It's, it's it's so important. It's so important. All right, guys. Massive, massive thank you. I can't thank you guys enough for is you guys that uh gave us a lot of opportunities and tuning in and give us giving us the number. You know what it's name number as I said, it's never been about the numbers anyway. It never has. It's all about getting the content out there. And if if even if it connects with one person, then our, our job's done. So massive thank you to everybody who sent lovely messages following the channels comments and the rest of it there's there's a handful of you which i can't thank you guys enough and you guys are absolutely amazing uh 
but yeah if you're new to the channel man check it out man what do you think two brothers geeking out about pop culture you know click on that subscribe button hit the notification bell every time we do a video i'm still doing x-men tober till the end of the month as well so you guys will get to see sketches as well and uh follow the social media channels man check it out we, we put up all of our weekly content on there you know give you thoughts and reviews and reactions of uh like pop culture stuff that comes out whether it's comic books or tv or netflix or whatever or things like that so check that out but g-man i gotta get ready to head out bro let me get a photo real quick but i'm gonna go use our infinity pool uh so i'm flossing a little bit or boasting <laughs> a little bit i'm gonna go up there and read some comments right, let me take a quick picture bro cool man all right got it i'll tag you in there oh. uh yeah uh bro Awesome. Good to catch up as always. I love the fact that we're doing this from around the world, literally. Oh, and we're going to keep on doing it. doesn't matter where we are. And thank you everyone for your, yes, for all your support. Cool. Go get ready, bro. I'm going to head out as well. Take care, uh, man. Love. Take it easy. Peace. Peace.